Oh, welcome to my world, where it's naturally supernatural. Buried in the library of the Vatican was an ancient 900-year-old prophecy which listed every pope for the next 112 popes. Well, we've had 111, and every single pope that had a prophetic word, and they all had it, that's what happened in their life. Amazing, stunning accuracy. Would you like to know what it says about the 112th pope? I'll tell you one thing. It says he will be the pope for the final judgment. Wow. You know, Tom and Chris, your best-selling books, you made major predictions. I mean, uh, you guys like to live a little dangerously. I mean, you went all out on the limb, and you stated, you predicted that in March of 2012, the Pope would resign for health reasons, and let's be candid, <laughs> they missed it. Did you? Well, at first, actually, we thought we might have. Uh, now we learned that, in fact, we did not. We made a prediction that Benedict would retire in either March or April of 2012, citing health reasons. Uh, when that date came and went and no activity uh, had transpired, we moved to the second part in our prediction, which we also made in 2012, that at a minimum he would retire before the end of 2013. Now we've learned, by the way, from the editor of the El Observatory Romano, which is the Vatican's owned mm. official media outlet, that in fact, Pope Benedict officially resigned at the end of March 2012 privately to a handful of cardinals who held it in a strict reserve, in a confidence. It couldn't be told even to other cardinals. This happened last year. He made it official in 2013, so in a very supernatural, dramatic way, we were actually right in both instances. But speaking about being right, I am fascinated about this 900-year-old prophecy uh, from this Saint uh, Malachi. Uh, tell me about these prophecies. Well, the prophecy of the popes was allegedly given to St. Malachi Morgair, an Irish saint, in 1139 A.D. Now, the way that this story is told, Malachi made a pilgrimage to Rome to see the pope, and right outside of the city of Rome, he had a vision of all the popes up until the tribulation period. So he wrote down a series of short Latin phrases for 112 popes, except the last one, which is quite a bit... Uh, more detailed. The, the last prophecy, the prophecy for the very next pope, says, in the extreme persecution of the Holy Roman Church, there will sit Peter the Roman, who will nurse the sheep in many tribulations. When they are finished, the city of seven hills will be destroyed, and the dreadful judge will judge his people. Now, I've gotten to know the two of you, and you uh, are such, Chris, a, a, a theologian, so after truth. Uh, you've analyzed all of these uh, prophecies for all, all 112 popes. Tell me one, pull one out about one pope that uh, you felt was amazing. And, but, but even beyond that, were they all on the money or not? Well, Sid, I'll tell you, when I, when I began to investigate this prophecy, I was not predisposed to believe it. I'm, I'm not a Catholic. I'm a Protestant. But I, I wanted to take a critical, skeptical kind of look at it. Now, some of them seem a little vague to me. Um, some of them seem to speak to the coat of arms of a pope or events during his papacy. But the ones that are accurate, the ones that make kind of a risky prediction are so accurate that I really could not dismiss it. And I think it does beg us to take it seriously. For instance, there was one prophecy in particular that grabbed my attention. This was for Benedict XV. Now, he was pope from 1914 to 1922, and the Latin phrase was religio de populata. 
That means religion depopulated in English. So what happened between 1914 and 1922? We had World War I, which is devastating to mm -hmm. Europe, devastating to the Catholic Church. But to add insult to injury, you had the Bolshevik Revolution in Russia, where 200 million people left the church to join the Communist Party. Those that didn't leave, Lenin targeted them specifically to eliminate them. So religion was depopulated probably more than any other period in history up until that time. And this prophecy nailed it. Now, why do you say that this will be the last pope? It's the last one on Malachi's list. And, and I just cited the, the prediction for this pope. It says, in the extreme persecution, the, the, the tribulation, the dreadful judge will judge the people. So it, it really does sound like the end times. And it matches the book of Revelation in some pretty compelling ways in chapter 17, which also speaks of a seven-hilled city. Uh, I'm going to tell you something. At first, when I heard about this, I didn't want to touch it with a 10-foot pole. But after talking to them on the phone, looking at their research, understanding their brilliance in their respective fields, I feel that what you're about ready to hear will change your paradigm for end times forever. For instance, they investigated secret files from the Vatican that shows that the Vatican has been in communication and been researching aliens from other planets that strongly affect your whole understanding of the last days. We'll be right back after this word. You know, the Bible warns about great delusion because people uh, won't have a love for the truth. They're going to accept lies in the last days. Uh, and I believe that what you're about to hear will totally change your paradigm on the end times. Now, Tom, I believe you were hand-picked by God for doing your part of the research team of the, of the last days. Uh, now, shortly after you became a believer, you died. Tell me about it. Yes, I did. I had been seeking God. I was a young believer. I went home one night. I clumb into bed. The next thing I know, I'm standing in front of a brilliant white light. Somehow I know that I'm in front of the Lord. And he's told me, I'm, you're, you know, he's told me some things, and now he's telling me I'm not going to remember, but it's time for me to return. The next thing I know, I'm falling from the heavens. I land on the bed in my bedroom. I set up real fast. I breathed in very deeply, <gasps> like that. And I find my wife sitting beside me. She's bawling her eyes out. Long story short is she had woke up in the middle of the night, found me dead, did various things to, um, you know, verify to herself that I was dead. Now, um, I started asking questions. Why would the Lord have showed me something and then told me that I wasn't going to remember what it was? That confused me. Uh, I happened to be reading through the Bible at that time and uh, was in Job 33. First time I was ever reading through the Bible in my life, and I'm praying, Lord, why would you show me something and then tell me I'm not going to remember what it was? When all of a sudden, off the pages from the 33rd chapter of the book of Job, I read these words, in the nighttime, in deep sleep, in slumbering upon the bed, then God seals the instructions of the righteous within them to hide pride from man. Now, Tom found after 25 years of being an Assembly of God pastor, a family secret. Tell me about that. Yes, well, I actually remember the first event when I was a kid, uh, waking up in the middle of the night, my sister screaming, terrified. We all go running to her room, and as a kid, Mom never would let me know what had happened that day. Years later, I discovered that that was the first night in which she began experiencing what many people in the secular world call alien abduction. She woke up, small bulbous headed, gray, three little gray men standing next to her bed speaking in a gibberish that she couldn't understand. And uh, that when she screamed, they, they vaporized. They literally just disappeared as if they were uh, more amorphous or shadowy, if you will, made out of smoke. They just disappeared. And uh, that stayed with me once I knew that. Well, here I am, I'm a pastor, right? I'm 25 years a pastor. I pastored large churches, I have responsibilities in the community. Right. Nobody can I talk to about this, you know, in the 70s. 
Uh, and then little by little, information began coming to me that ultimately made me conclude, Sid, that we were talking about a demonic phenomenon. Why? Well, first, first of all, because of the malevolent behavior, but more importantly, and this is really the crux of it, once we learned that by taking the name of Jesus Christ over these powers, we could stop the activity permanently. And from the day that my sister gave her life to the Lord, that activity stopped in its tracks, and that illustrated to this old preacher, we were talking here about demons, not aliens from another world. Okay, Chris, you are an evangelical you're a theologian. Uh, you've been trained in these areas. You specialized in grad school uh, on Catholic and Protestant reformers. Uh, and God really prepared you also for this project. Uh, tell me about, because you have prophetic dreams, tell me about one. Well, Sid, you know, I got radically saved. And I had been into a lot of this weird stuff in my past, and the Lord completely changed my thinking. And, you know, as my values changed and, and I started to get into God's Word, He did give me a dream. He gave me a vision that He was going to use me to minister in areas that most Christians are afraid to talk about. And between the two of them, you can see why God put a perfect research team together. But now, the question that I have, what have you uncovered from records in the Vatican about aliens? I mean, I, 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 it blows my mind that they're even researching such a subject as this. Well, the, the records in the Vatican go back centuries. Actually, I, I wrote two chapters of history concerning uh, the Vatican's interest in extraterrestrials. They have a whole theology developed around what they call the principle of plentitude, meaning anything that God could do, He would do. So they consider the existence of aliens an inevitable consequence of, of God's omnipotence. Now, you, you've actually researched with Vatican astronomers. Uh, what did they tell you? Yeah, it's extraordinary. We even had the opportunity to go to Mount Graham in Arizona, which is where their Vatican Astronomical Technology Telescope, called that, where it's at, where the, uh, the Vatican's astronomers study the uh, deep space. And um, in the course of doing that, getting permission through the Arizona State University to go there to meet mm -hmm. with their astronomers, the Jesuits who are there, uh, we also got access to top astronomers that work in Rome, including um, an astronomer by the name of Guy Cosmonago. He's one of the top astronomers for the Vatican. What, what was the major thing you got from your interview with him? Oh, well, two major things. One, uh, he says, um, without apology that very soon the nations of the world are going to look to the aliens for their salvation. Now when you make a comment like Did that... Did you it, just hear what he said? Does that show you how fast things are moving and how we're really in the last of the last days? And then of course you want to get behind that, right? You want to find out where are they coming from. So he agreed to be interviewed five times from Rome. Uh, and then gave us documents which are not available to the public that outline what much of the inner thinking of the highest level theologians and astronomers at the Vatican believe now, uh, including the idea that Jesus might be the son of a star child. Now, when we ask him what is a star child, right, right they're talking about an alien intelligence from another world and that the, um, the birth of Jesus Christ, the virgin birth was in fact comparable to an abduction scenario in which these aliens used the Virgin Mary to create Jesus. And this is one of the ways in which they're combining the, 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 the idea that we are soon to be visited by an alien savior from another world. Hold that thought. Wait till you find out about the Vatican astronomer saying he's operating with Project Lucifer. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural. Okay, I promised you we would find out uh, the, 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 this great Catholic astronomer, the number one, is operating with something called Project Lucifer. What is that? 
Well, up on top of Mount Graham in Arizona, there's, a, you, there's an observatory complex that consists of three very high-powered telescopes. One is the Vatican Advanced Technology Telescope, there's a, there's a radio telescope, and then there's one called the Large Binocular Telescope. This is the most powerful telescope in the world. In fact, they told us they can get better images of space than the Hubble Space Telescope can. Hmm. Now, attached to this telescope is an infrared camera named Lucifer which is really a, a kind of a, a, an odd name um, <laughs> think so. for a camera. And you know, from the information that we gathered, this thing was named by the Max Planck Institute and some German astronomers. But the Vatican is part of this conglomerate up there, that, mm -hmm. that, and they're all working together. Now, what this instrument's used for is astrobiology, for looking for exoplanets, looking for other worlds. And uh, the infrared spectrum is also very useful for seeing things that can't be seen with the naked eye. And many UFO researchers have noted that you can see a lot of ships and entities that you normally can't see. Tell me about what the Vatican astronomers are telling you, or what other experts, I mean, you, you had a research team. Right. Tell me a few of the things they're telling Well, first of all, the day that we spent it, uh, uh, on Mount Graham, the entire day there, we had the Jesuits speaking to us face to face. Mm -hmm. We also had systems engineers. It was astonishing the access that they gave us. And one of the things we found amazing in the use of the Lucifer device and even the other telescopes is how commonly the astronomers spoke of UFOs. We, we were just taken back by the fact that it was almost a nuisance to them I, I, that there are so many. I, I have to tell you, <laughs> uh, UFOs, I mean, I think that's like science fiction, to be quite candid with you. But I told my staff about this interview, and one of the staff members said when he was 12 or 13 years old, he saw a UFO, and they visited him and talked to him. I mean, and that's just a small group of people. And uh, statistics say uh, one out of two people in America believe in UFOs, unidentified flying objects. Uh, and we're hearing now reports all over the world. Well, and a lot of Christians have saw them too. My wife and I were crossing over a mountain one time when a circular silvery device dropped down from the heavens, shot around, done all kinds of things we couldn't explain. We didn't know if it was an angel, a demon, or whatever it was, but it certainly was what people describe as UFOs. And so the phenomenon, to me, is certainly real. Then, of course, you begin defining what it is. Well, to the Vatican and to the astronomers... But wait a second, it's demonic. Why would the Vatican be studying this? Yeah, well... Not only are they studying it, uh, Corraldo Balducci, who was the spokesman for the Vatican, he was their official mouthpiece concerning the alien presence, not just the reality of aliens on other worlds, but an alien presence that is here on Earth now. Is You can go to YouTube and watch his shows on Italian television when he spoke for the church and said that the church was using its embassies around the world to compile information, a case study, if you will, on what the aliens are doing on Earth now. So the belief system is deep, regardless of what you or I might make out of it. And I got to tell you, especially when it comes to alien abduction, I am convinced that we are talking about about demonic activity, not intelligences from another world, maybe from another dimension. And they're moving in and out of our reality. They certainly have a conspiratorial uh, plan that might even involve human hybridity. There's a lot to the study. That's why it took us thousands of pages and six investigators, and I had to bring a theologian on <laughs> to make sure that I didn't get off track, right? But, uh, but, but what they're saying to us now is it's going to affect Christian belief. There is a professor for the Pope's uh, uh, University in Rome, and uh, uh, he is a very highly respected intellectual. Uh, his last name is Tenzniti, and he has written a paper now in which he is saying that very soon, not, a, not right in the beginning, we won't have to um, deny our Christian faith in the beginning. But there is information coming from another world, and once it is confirmed, it is going to require a rereading of the gospel as we know it. And that's the kind of information that we are receiving from the highest levels of Vatican intelligentsia. Where's this headed, in your opinion, after all this research? I think it's headed towards an imminent great deception. 
Uh, I, think, I think they either know something or they suspect something, and that's why they're preparing the Catholic faithful. The, 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 and of course the Vatican has reached beyond Catholics, um, but they're trying to prepare the world. Let me tell you something. This is information that you must digest in light of the Scriptures. But the most important thing is not what we're talking about. The most important thing is that you know God. Whether He comes in one minute or whether He comes in 20 years, you must know Him for yourself. Religion is good if it helps you know God. But if it's an end in itself, it means nothing. The only way you can know God is step one. He's already done everything He's ever going to do for you. His Messiah was sent to earth to die, the Son of the living God, and rise from the dead. And all of your sins and all of your diseases were put upon Him, and by His wounds you were healed. Make Jesus your Lord with your mouth. You don't need a formal prayer. You say, Jesus, I make you my Lord. Live inside of me. Forgive me for all of my sins. And this is what the Bible says. It's, you say it's too good. I agree. It is too good. Take the goodness of God. Taste and see that the Lord is good. He's good. Why does the Vatican own and operate an observatory to monitor extraterrestrial and alien encounters? Learn about the shocking file uncovered, written by the Vatican's leading astronomer, that makes an outrageous proclamation that Jesus was from an alien race. We'll be back with more of It's Supernatural! I'm interrupting this show with a special announcement. We have a new pope, and he's St. Francis. His parents are Italian. According to the Malachi prophecy, the last pope would be Roman. Also, he's the first Jesuit pope, and next week you'll find out how the Jesuits are involved in the last days. supernatural dramatic way we were actually right in both instances but speaking about being right I am fascinated about this 900 year old prophecy uh, from this Saint uh, Malachi uh, tell me about these prophecies well the prophecy of the popes was allegedly given to Saint Malachi Morgare an Irish saint in 1139 AD now, the way that this story is told, Malachi made a pilgrimage to Rome to see the Pope, and right outside of the city of Rome, he had a vision of all the popes up until the tribulation period. So he wrote down a series of short Latin phrases for 112 popes, except the last one, which is quite a bit uh, more detailed. The, the last prophecy, the prophecy for the very next pope, says, in the extreme persecution of the Holy Roman Church, there will sit Peter the Roman, who will nurse the sheep in many tribulations. When they are finished, the city of seven hills will be destroyed, and the dreadful judge will judge his people. Now, I've gotten to know the two of you, and you uh, are, are such, Chris, a, a, a theologian, so after truth. Uh, you've analyzed all of these uh, prophecies for all, all 112 popes. Tell me one, pull one out about one pope that uh, you felt was amazing. And, but, but even beyond that, were they all on the money or not? We thought we might have. Uh, now we learned that, in fact, we did not. We made a prediction that Benedict would retire in either March or April of 2012, citing health reasons. Uh, when that date came and went and no activity uh, had transpired, we moved to the second part in our prediction, which we also made in 2012, that at a minimum he would retire before the end 
of 2013. Now we've learned, by the way, from the editor of the El Observatorio Romano, which is the Vatican's owned mm. official media outlet, that in fact, Pope Benedict officially resigned at the end of March 2012 privately to a handful of cardinals who held it in a strict reserve, in a confidence. It couldn't be told even to other cardinals. This happened last year. He made it official in 2013. 112th Pope, I'll tell you one thing, it says he will be the Pope for the final judgment. You know, Tom and Chris, your best-selling books, you made major predictions. I mean, uh, you guys like to live a little dangerously. I mean, you went all out on the limb, and you stated, you predicted that in March of 2012, the Pope would resign for health reasons, and let's be candid, <laughs> they missed it. Did you? Well, at first, actually... Oh, welcome to my world, where it's naturally supernatural. Buried in the library of the Vatican was an ancient 900-year-old prophecy which listed every pope for the next 112 popes. Well, we've had 111, and every single pope that had a prophetic word, and they all had it, that's what happened in their life. Amazing, stunning accuracy. Would you like to know what it says about the 